Patrick Montgomery was in court. Jonathan Manapa will stay in federal custody. No, I don't take responsibility at all. Everyone, welcome to the show. So 57-year-old Pennsylvania resident and retired firefighter Robert Sanford was extremely violent towards his fellow first responders on January 6th. Sanford was first caught on camera throwing an orange traffic cone at a police sergeant on the Lower West Terrace. Sanford also was screaming at officers. He was calling them names for several minutes. He was calling them traitors. Then he picked up a fire extinguisher from the ground and he chucked it into a crowd of officers who were standing a couple of feet below him. That fire extinguisher struck two officers in the head and each of them sustained injuries. One of them was actually hurt so bad that he was sent to the hospital because his head was hurting so bad. So Sanford remained in the area for a while after that, and then he ended up leaving the Capitol of his own accord. He, he wasn't asked. He wasn't forced. He left. Following the Capitol attack, an arrest warrant was issued for him, and he found out, so he turned himself in. So Sanford was arrested on January 14th of 2021, and he was charged with civil disorder, assaulting officers, entering restricted grounds with a deadly or dangerous weapon, disorderly conduct on restricted grounds, physical violence on restricted grounds, and parading or demonstrating at a Capitol. In September of 2022, Sanford pleaded guilty to one count of assaulting officers with a dangerous weapon. So he was facing up to 20 years in prison, three years of probation, and 250000 in fines. However, as typical, the government requested only 71 months in prison, three years of probation, and restitution to be determined. At the sentencing hearing, Sanford apologized to the officers that he assaulted, and he told the judge, quote, mob mentality is real, and I got caught up in it. Sanford also said that he was embarrassed, ashamed, and disgusted by his own behavior. And this one I've never heard. This one's new for me. Um, Sanford actually sought the help of a cult deprogramming expert to try to help him figure out how he fell for Donald Trump's lies about the election. And in a sentencing memo to the court, his attorney told the judge, quote, during this process, Mr. Sanford was confronted with facts about the stolen election conspiracy theory, among others, and how psychological manipulation is used to indoctrinate the followers of a conspiracy. Mr. Sanford learned how mental health problems, whether diagnosed or not, cause isolation, which, when paired with belief in a conspiracy, gradually cause more isolation. He learned how the websites he was relying on for news would use algorithms to facilitate his trip down the proverbial conspiracy rabbit hole with more and more extreme articles. Consequently, it becomes easier to dismiss ideas and facts that do not fit with one's narrative. So there could be hope for this guy. I was thinking, too, this should be mandatory. For every single sentence handed down for a January 6th defendant, this should be mandatory. Uh, I don't know how, you know, constitutionally sound that is, if that's legal, I don't know. But if they can order them to get mental health treatment, wouldn't this count as mental health treatment? I think I think that they should. Anyway, um, Sergeant Acolino Gonell attended the hearing and he provided an impact statement, uh, victim impact statement, because he was struck by the traffic cone that Sanford threw. And it was pretty disturbing to hear Gonell say that a lot of the officers at the Capitol attack didn't seek medical attention after the attack because they felt, quote, obligated to be there. And then Gonell also said that the a lot of the officers don't bother to attend the sentencing hearings because they're discouraged by the weak sentences being given. Very, very disturbing. You know, I have to wonder how many of them voted for Mr. Law and Order Donald Trump, you know, how they like him now. 
Um, anyway, U.S. District Judge Paul Friedman presided over Sanford's case, and he told Sanford that as a former firefighter, he, quote, should have known better than most. Basically, he was saying what, you know, what law enforcement was up against that day, you should have known. And then the judge also noted that deterrence is vital because there's so many people out there who still believe Trump's lies about the election. And then he pointed out that, quote, not many of them showed up for Trump's arraignment. <laughs> so when all was said and done, uh, Sanford was sentenced to 52 months in prison, three years of probation and $5,798 in restitution. 3798 is to be paid to an officer who was injured by him throwing that fire extinguisher at him. So it's to cover his medical medical expenses. And then 2000 will be given to the architect of the Capitol to cover the cost of damage to the building, to the grounds. So I have to give credit where credit is due. I have to give Sanford credit for seeking out and taking part in that deprogramming treatment. You know, because of that, I think this sentence was fair in this case. And as I mentioned, that should be mandatory. All of these MAGA cult members who took part in the attack on the Capitol should be required to go through this cult deprogramming. But for being sucked in by the lies, they wouldn't have been there. I know it's kind of like, you know, with an alcoholic or a drug addict, they have to be ready to get help. They have to be, you know, willing participants. They have to want to get better. And most of them don't even know, just as with alcoholics and drug addicts, that they have a problem. So anyway, guys, I'll let you know if I hear any more. Thank you so much for watching and listening. Please like, share and subscribe. Become a supporter if you can financially one time or monthly, truly helps to keep the show going. Take care, love you all, and I'll talk with you soon.